Good afternoon, good morning, good good everything. Vicky here from Tales on the Trails and that was a really weird intro. What we're going to be doing today is playing Planet Zoo and in particular we're going to focus on the Eurasia DLC. With this one they have added, I believe, seven different animals and a bunch of different scenarios. Scenario scenery pieces. There is one new scenario as well. Uh, they're pretty fun to play, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing sandbox and we're going to build our little zoo. Um, yeah, it's going to be full of these seven new animals, fingers crossed. And we're going to start on a plain map. I love sandbox. If you see my other videos, sandbox is my way to play. Everybody plays it different. I'm going to set that up to my presets. It means essentially that your animals aren't fussy and it makes it a little bit easier and more enjoyable for me personally. I mean, a lot of people do like the highly realistic side to animal care, but for me, I'm kind of like cruising along. So first thing we need, we're going to need some pathways because we're building this zoo from absolute scratch. Figure out where we're going to put it. I think I always like making like a, a lake entry. Yeah, your visitors get a nice view over a lake as they walk in. We're not going to like overly decorate it. We're just going to get the bases, get the animals. Uh, there's an exhibit animal as well. But what we're doing here, we're just chiseling into the ground so we can make our rather large pond or lake. I'll call it a lake, especially with the size of it. We're just burrowing down. And we're going to fill this up with some nice calm water in which we get the edges all nice and sorted. The animals can actually get to the water, you know, if it's this, this can't speak today. If the slope is too steep, then they're going to struggle. They are really going to struggle. So let's build our bridge. Let's change it a bit. There we are. Keep it nice and straight using the uh, selected grid method. Change it at the end. And there we go. Let's just add some water. There we go, around there. Perfect. There we go, nice big lake. I mean, imagine going to a zoo and you see the first thing you see is a big lake. That's kind of nice, I think. We're just going to expand our walkways. Ideally, we're going to have a bunch of exhibits down this end and a few shops and food and drinks and toilets. And obviously, we're going to have to build a staff area as well so they can actually properly care for the animals and, and for the customers who are visiting our hopefully pretty little zoo. Just going to build our first exhibit at the bottom. Electric fence, why not? We're gonna do two across, two back. So it's kind of a square. And what I've done here is I've selected the angle snap. So it's 90 degree angle, so it's nice and straight. I'm gonna add three exhibits at the bottom here, I think. What we are doing, we are adding the animals from the, um, the new DLC and there's I think there are six animals and one exhibit animal because the exhibit animals work a little bit differently. We've got the wolverine, the sloth bear, the mute swan, wild boar, uh, wizard, I don't know how you say that, I think that's how you say it, uh, a tiger, a tarkin and then the exhibit animal which is the Herman's tortoise. Tortoise. Let's start building our staff area. Nice and straight paths. I don't know why I like straight paths, but that's the way I do it. Other people do it differently. I do like doing my zoos on one level though. Sometimes a little bit boring, but meh, it works. We've got our pathway. I mean, these staff, staff pathways, um, only staff members will use that. Customers will not. Visitors, even. I'm going to join this up here. I'm 
and there we go so before we add animals we are going to need some staff facilities we have to accommodate them and we're going to need staff members as well um i'm just going to go for some basic right keeper huts let me get rid of my emoji that's in the way um hold on there we go we can actually see what we're doing now so this is the quarantine now we're going for the vet building a staff room we all need a staff room where the staff members go when they're tired you know the vet is for the vet the quarantine is for ideally the animals go in there first before they're put into any exhibit so in case they're carrying a disease you put them in the quarantine and then they get taken to the vet if needed otherwise you can go straight into the uh enclosure where the little animal buddies are we have a workshop there and a trade center now we have the trade center it will allow us to you know adopt animals we are just going to set up the gate system you need gates for your employees to get in and out of the enclosures there we go Uh, put an ATM. No, we're going to go with the donation boxes. Guests love to support the animals. So, donation boxes, they will donate money. And it's a little bit of funds for the zoo. I mean, my sandbox mode doesn't have funds, it's unlimited. But they'll still give it anyway. Always have donation boxes. I'm just going to build some little ponds so the animals can drink out of. I don't like using the water bowls because you're employees for the most part have to refill them there is a automatic watering one but i just prefer the water hole again it's sandbox so water doesn't need heating it doesn't need cleaning so what we're going to do now is go through and find all the um eurasia dlc animals the mute swan nyla nyla no, that's not in it, but we've added it anyway. The Sega, Sega, Sagia, Sloth Bear, Tarkin, Wild Boar, all of that. So we're just going to add these swans for now. I mean, obviously, there's no animals already in the exhibit, so we don't really need to send them to quarantine. Because if they're found to be ill in the exhibit, they will be taken to the vet place anyway. I'm just going to grab that dude. Um, because it's a rare, rare colour, and we add a male as well. I always like to go um, one male, one female, just to start. So at this one, we're gonna have um the the why isn't thing spelt wrong? Oh, we're gonna have the mute swans in the big pond, I think. So we're gonna have to build a fence line for that, an enclosure. We're going to add all the items we need, or some of the items we need, for this particular beastie. Type its name in. If you type the name in here, it will bring up all items relevant to that species, which is very useful. Even better when you can actually spell it correctly as well. It does work well. Some enrichment items, there's food, there's toys, there's scratching poles. Add a shelter. One, that one over there. Add some bedding. Not sure how big this creature is. I think it might need bigger bedding than that. And add a, a chewy toy thing. Okay. We're going to select these and we're going to send them straight. No, hold on. Get it running. It does this sometimes. Reselect it. Oh, no, we need stuff. Yes. Staff zones, very important. Essentially, you can allocate certain staff for certain zones and then, you know, add staff. You need your staff. So we have cleaners, very useful. You don't want rubbish everywhere. Employ not employees. Your visitors will get unhappy if there's a lot of mess. You've got your zoo... Your <clears throat> excuse me. you got your zookeepers who will look after the animals, your engineers who will look after your fences, your cash machines, your amenities... 
got vets here, we've got security. Security is very useful, it stops you having to repair items which get damaged by grumpy patrons. And we have everybody we need. We've got um the people that tell stuff to your visitors. Can't remember the name of them now. What we're gonna do with just adding the items, we're gonna speed it up a little bit. Add the animals, not the items, sorry. Why isn't or I d I don't know how you say the name, but that's the closest I can get. I'm sorry. It's like a big buffalo. Oh no, he's got like injuries. Okay, yeah, injured. He's definitely injured, so I'm gonna call the vet for him. And he will be taken to the vet clinic, get treated, and be brought back. The vet is just entering. We're just going to keep our eye on him. I love how they do add that kind of level. Right, you can see injuries on animal, animals, even. And he's off to the vet, so not much more we can do here. That one's all okay, nothing wrong. Yeah, so now we have this big lake as well, which we're going to have to do something about. But yeah, first we're going to add some uh, amenities for our customers who will be arriving. They are arriving already. You can see them walking down the down the bridge, actually. Um, we get like a, a couple of drinks places, a couple of eateries, food places, burgers, hot dogs. You know, whatever we go for. His customers love food. And they will need toilets and other things. Oops, wrong place. Uh, toilets, let's go for that one. Over there. Didn't. There we go, toilets. Toilets are good. Everyone needs a toilet. Um, we're just adding a basic shell around them to so look a little bit prettier. You can add signs and stuff so you like it shows what kind of food there is. It all down to personal preference. I do do that sometimes. We do have customers. What we're going to add here, we're going to add these signs which tell our visitors what the animals are and it gives them a little bit of knowledge. Education even. Educators are the people I was thinking of earlier. Can't remember the name of the teachers. Still got scars on him, but I'm sure maybe over time it'll disappear. Possibly. Uh, thinking of adding like a talk show, but I don't really want to encroach on the the lake area. Okay, so lake. We will add a boundary. We're going to add a transparent boundary near the walkway, but we're going to add a physical boundary everywhere else. It makes it look a little bit prettier and it's more secure, stops animals escaping. We're going to make this into one very large enclosure. I'm going to adjust it slightly. We're going to have a transparent border here um, after we place this area here. It means animals can pass through, people can pass through, but it doesn't have a physical border, but it is boundary in place, if that makes sense. It's confusing, but no, we don't want to put it down here. Anyway, we want to go across. So remove that bit and put it there. I'm going to go across. This needs to be a physical border. Concentrate on this bit. Borders can be really fussy sometimes, but a little bit of patience and you get there eventually. I mean, there's too much like invisible boundary here. So I'm going to go back and adjust it. But let's just get this bit right first. Not that way. There we go. I'm going to keep going around. Uh, 
nearly there. Slowly getting there. I do like how you can like grab boundaries and fences and just move them to exactly where you want. Very useful tool. Took me a while to figure that one out. When I mean, I've got like over 500 hours in Planet Zoo. And it took a while for me to figure that out. What we're going to do now, we're going to change all these fences to a physical fence instead of the invisi fence. Um, it is sometimes a little bit difficult, depending on the scenery around, but we will get there. We will keep trying and succeed. Not like that. I think we're going to have to adjust this little bit here. Like so. And there we go, did it. I don't mind a little gap at the side, it's cosmetic, it's fine. Get the rest of it done. Just like that. But now we are going to have to um, add a gate and link up this enclosure with the rest of the zoo so the staff, nem staff members staff members know what to do. I'm just going to add a gate here. I'm going to join up the pathway. Like so. Now we're going to have to add it to the work zone, this new enclosure. Oh, and the buildings, which we added. We'll do that now. Which means all staff members we have will access all of this, all of these amenities and all of these enclosures. I'm out of litter. I need some trash cans or bins as we call them. Let's find them. Nope. Over there. We're going to put quite a few of these down because now we have shops, like food shops. Um, people will eat the food and throw it on the floor because there's nowhere to put the rubbish. We do have the uh, staff members who will sweep up, but it's better having the bins. There we go. A couple down here as well. Like so. Yeah, it's trash on the floor there, so hopefully in future they will use it. And now we have these two mute swans, um, which are going in here. It's a very large enclosure for two swans. Change the time of day and set it to daytime because why not? We can see what we're doing essentially. These swans are coming, being delivered by the zookeepers and there they are. We'll have a quick look at these guys. I do like how you can see the size difference as well. Like if in the stats the swan is smaller, it will physically be smaller. And they've got the movement of these swans perfect. I mean, where I live, we have a lake and there are several of these mute swans and they are so clumbersome. They're heavy, it looks like they're sore footed and they're not built for walking. They're built for the water. And I think the movement, they've just nailed it. They look like the mute swan. I have no complaints whatsoever. I really do like it. I'm not a bird fan. I say that, but I've got a budgie. But I, I'm not a fan of birds in general. But they've nailed it. They have absolutely got the movement of the mute swan absolutely perfect. And even in the water as well, which we're going to get to very shortly. We're just going to let these have a wander down and have a look. Just give me a second.
I mean, you've got the tail wag as well. Swans always wag the tails, and I really like that. It's the little things. I mean, pretty soon, hopefully this one will get into the deeper water. There we are. If we have a look under the water, you can see it paddling. And that's what happens. It's amazing. I do like it. I really do like it. I like how his wings are fluffed up as well. You get like that when they get a little bit defensive. These are those, um, wizent, wizent, the, the, the weird buffalo things. Yeah. So we have them and we have our mute swans. We're going to add some uh, care items for our swans as well, because I forgot to do it. So we'll like need food, we'll need, they've got water, that, that's not an issue, they need um, things to play with, food enrichment items, toy enrichment items, and a dry place to stay as well, so we're just going to do that. It's slowly getting there. Here we have the shelter. We're going to put some bedding in as well, as always. We don't need a large amount of bedding. I don't know, even know if it's going to use it, the swans. I've never seen a swan in a shelter. They're always like asleep on an island with the, the neck tucked under the wing. An island in the middle of the lake, obviously. Um, we don't have that, so I don't know what they're going to do. They've got a shelter, it's all good. These guys here have got a shelter as well. I've um, got everything they should need. Just going to look some foliage. Um, no, okay. I think we should start on looking at another animal. We'll go for the Naiwa. Naiwa? This isn't part of the uh, Eurasia DLC. I, I added it. I don't know why. We've got them. So we're going to add them anyway. We're going to make a little enclosure for these dudes. We have a one of the rare coloured white ones as well, which is awesome. So we're gonna go on make um Oh yeah we're gonna set the the food as well. You can change the quality of the food the animals get. It costs more for the higher quality food but the animals do tend to be healthier. And maybe live a little bit longer. I'm not sure on that, don't quote me. I have a feeling. So we have these Nyla deer thing. Again, not part of the DLC, but we added them. We're going to add a feeder for them. Um, an enrichment balls. A little shelter. Add some bedding into there as well. And when they're ready, they will... Yeah, we'll put them in there, a little toy thing. Scratchy tree, everyone needs a scratchy tree. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's that. I'm going to move it, these animals into here from the quarantine. Quarantine has been passed. They will be delivered very shortly by our zookeepers from the quarantine era, era, area even. There we go, and in one goes, where's the other? We've got the male, the dark one. The young buck. And the female one is smaller, and she's run off. Have a quick look at this dude, he looks nice actually, no cuts or anything, no battle scars. Keep an eye on him for now. Have a quick look at the female, which is the uh, the white one. There is a name for it. it, begins with an L and I can't pronounce it for the life of me. Lewistic? List. Um, oh, it says white, a white variation. Interesting. We have a white one. 
Okay, next up, what we're going to do, let's have a look. We've got Swan. Let's get rid of the ones which we already have. Got that, got that. So we have the Zagia, Soft Bear, Takin, Wild Boar. We've got the Wizent, Wizent. So we need the Wolverine. You won't see the Hermes Tortoise here because it's an exhibit animal and not a enclosure animal. So we have the, yeah, Wild Boar. Let's get this, the Takin. It's a weird animal. It's like a little fluffy bison thing, I guess. I don't know. A glorified cow. There we go. We are sticking it in the... Uh, the place. Quarantine, that's the one. I forgot the word of quarantine. So we're going to make sure that they're all passed and okay. Takes a minute. We do speed up the game every now and then. Gonna find the items what we need for this fine beastie. There's some feeders, balls, all very similar items actually. What we need between all the animals we've added, apart from the swans. Scratching post. Find a shelter which is big enough. Again, not sure the size. Not very up to date on my uh, bovine species really. The bovines. Cows, types of cows, bovines. They go moo. Okay, so where are they? Uh, da, 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 da. There they are, they are in quarantine. Let's move them since they've passed. Ollie's okay, Ollie's good, Ollie's good. Speed it up. And they have arrived. Oh, the little cows. Are they cows? They have a weird nose. That is one strange animal. I'm sorry, but... Wouldn't win a beauty contest. Keep our eye on it for a second. And this is a female. Slight different um, face shape and size. Probably body shape as well. It reminds me of something from the Ice Age, but a lot smaller. Probably related. I don't know. There is like a uh, um, an encyclopedia into the game about each each animal. Um, let's have a look. Is a goat antelope, apparently. So what's the other one we've got? The why why isn't it's a type of bison by the look of it? It is. Um, we have the mute swan as well. Because yeah, this it's like an um, encyclopedia. It tells you all about the animals. There's other pages. It tells you what research items you can get for them. What um, plants they like. What kind of do they like hills? You know stuff like that. But I'm on the sandbox. Made it easy. If you're not on the sandbox, they will need their enclosures very precisely built. So just, these are the information signs. We're just gonna set it up for each of our animal. The weird goat sheep thing. Yeah, we change this over to the one not part of the DLC, the Eurasia. But we added it. It reminds me of a bongo. Bongos are more orange though. We got cow, and we need one for the mute swans, I believe. Grab that, duplicate it. And go over there. No, it's too far. Let's let's put it over here. Yes, better, much better. Change it over to the mute swan. There we go. Yay, did it. So I mean, these are educational boards, the uh, visitors will learn a little bit of information. There are stats in the zoo, like how educated your staff are, how educated your visitors are. It all helps, it really does. 
So yeah, we just change the grade of the food to the highest quality because we you know we want our animals to be well fed and have a healthy diet. Um next, what should we add? Let's get rid of what we have already added. Um that one, yep. Let's add the Sega. Sega. A joke, sorry. It's probably not even said that way. Sagia, Sega. It's an animal with a weird nose, again. Let's extend our pathway over here. Because what we now need to do is add more enclosures. So, we'll do that. I think we'll add another one, two, three. We'll need a few. We will need a few. Let's just add a little area over here. It will make sense. And yes, you can move trees if you place them inside of something you don't want. So move that out of the way over here. Um, let's get on with some bits over here. Trash bin. Yeah, I think we need a bench. We've not got any benches. Your guests do get tired, so we'll add some of these around the zoo. Add a few more. Over here, over here. But essentially, yeah, that is the, the Eurasia DLC. It is an animal pack, primarily. And yeah, I like it. I really do like it. I know I added an extra animal, but I'm going to leave you watching the rest of this video. We do include all of the DLC animals. We do expand on more of the enclosures add diff more variety and we add tours as well i've not really played with the tours that much but we had a tour and a tour guide and you know they inform the guests about all the wonderful animals we've got all about them it makes everybody happy we add one of the new items as well which got added not with the dlc in particular but with a patch which got released at the same time as the eurasia dlc which is a souvenir shop which is wicked it is awesome i love it I mean, you guys can buy gift items before, but not in all in one shop. It's amazing. It's, you know, we go into it and we have a good look. So yeah, I'm Vicky from Tales on Trails. I hope you do like it. I'm not disappearing right now. I'm going to bring up some information. Again, this is the Eurasia Animal Pack. And what they added with this, we're just going to bring it up. We're going to tell you about it. They added the animals, the wolverine, the sloth bear. Mute Swan, Wild Boar, Wizent, Wizent, not sure how you say it, Sega, Zagia, maybe, Tarkin, and the Herman Tortoise. We do add all of these animals to our zoo. They do add a new scenario as well to the career mode. And they also add some extra scenery items, which is awesome. Love the scenery items and an avatar item as well. Well, let me just get rid of these. And yeah, I have a, a silly amount of playtime. That's 548 hours on this game. It is fun. I love it. Always loved it. It's a peaceful, relaxing game for me. Other people play completely different. I just play sandbox. I absolutely adore this game. I always have done. You know, I had a soft spot. Completely different game. Completely different developer. It was uh, Zoo Tycoon. Loved it. Absolutely loved it growing up in like the 90s. Was it 90s or early 2000s? It was somewhere around there. But this, Planet Zoo, absolutely spot on. Do recommend this DLC. If you don't have it, go look for it. It is on Steam. I will put links in the description. I'm going to leave you watching the rest of this video. Thanks for watching and happy trails out there.
Ja, ja.
Ich habe eine Frage von Justus. 